No. Ah, yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus, for a kind introduction. Uh, I'm also very thrilled and happy to be here today, together with all the partners here promoting HTPLC in future lesson. Uh, my name is Thomas Afrensky, but please, uh, like Marcus said, refer, I refer to myself to Tom, so it's fine if you call me Tom. I do work for uh, the company Social Next, and um, this is the introduction of my slides. So, maybe because most of you guys do not know what Social Next is and what we do, I will give some company introduction first that you know with whom we are working and with whom we are dealing. Then, uh, I will have some basic introduction on the HTPLC technology. So, I have to have many thanks to Kodasan that he already explained so much that I think it will be much easier for me <laughs> based on the explanations of him to continue. Uh, then some slides about the chipset itself, what it looks like and what kind of features is that. And of course I will have at the end the summary. So coming uh, to the company introduction, Social Next. So our company name is Social Next Inc. Uh, we have a capital of around about 302 million US dollars. Uh, and the start of business was March uh, 2015. So people might say, oh, March 2015 sounds like a startup company. Uh, are we confident working with these guys? But uh, yeah, the truth is far off because basically in 2015 what happened is there was a Fujitsu semiconductor branch and a Panasonic semiconductor branch and actually they merged. Right? So two big semiconductor companies merged and uh, yeah, joined and uh, to have better technology, better products out on the market. So we do have uh, more than 40 years of experience in the field. We have a lot of deployments, many chipsets in many kinds of areas. So uh, you're not dealing with some uh, yeah, startup company, not knowing what we're doing. And I said, main business is silicon chip design uh, and the development, including solutions and services even. And that's uh, done worldwide. We are um, not very big, but also not so small. As you can see, we have around about 2,600 employees worldwide. And basically, we have uh, six group companies. So as mentioned in the beginning, uh, Social X Inc. Uh, headquarters is in Japan, in Shinjokohama. And uh, if we talk about HEPLC, there's also an office in Kyoto, which is very much involved. So that's uh, where HEPLC comes from. We do have branches then of course, in Asia region to promote things. We have branches in America. And me personally, I'm coming from Social Next Europe. So in Europe, we have Autumn headquarters, which is in London, it's very close to the Frankfurt area. But we also have an office in Berlin, which is close to Munich. And me personally, again, I'm in the Magnet branch in UK, which is close to Windsor or London, west of London. Then business scope. So just to give you an overview, so our company is not mainly focusing on IoT or HTPLC as this. So we have many different kind of uh, businesses and uh, areas we're working on. So just to start down here on the bottom left side, so we do a lot of stuff in imaging, so augmented or virtual reality kind of things. So we work with camera manufacturers like Leica, they use our chipsets. Or we do a lot of industrial automation, office solutions. And that's what it also means we uh, work with test and measurement manufacturers. So all the big uh, test measurement companies use our chipsets actually. A big branch is data center networking. Uh, data center is like access and metro kind of chipsets. And if you talk networking, in the past we did a lot in optical transmission. Networking means uh, submarine networking or access or also metro things uh, where you talk about 160 gigabits, gigabits per second. Uh, being transmitted, so uh, huge things. And now, the last four years, we're also focusing very much on 5G and 6G transmission. So we have also a very huge background in high data transmission and uh, wireless communications. And we do automotive, so like advanced driving system systems or human machine interfaces. But yeah, last but not least, of course, there's also this IoT and radar sensing uh, group where the HGPLC belongs to. So if you look uh, on RF CMOS technology, like so we have different applications. One of the main thing we do is here on IoT communications here on the top side. Uh, and why I show this slide is basically all our chipsets are 
very specialized, very custom oriented, and all of them are normally very, very compact, very small size. Uh, we are proud of having very low power consumption. Uh, they're very power efficient. Uh, since we are solo on the field, we have a lot of IPs and patents and stuff on uh, special noise reduction techniques and all this kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, just to give you a good feeling <laughs> that we have a lot of good solutions there. Okay, about HFP and C technology, as Ota Sam already said, you saw the similar picture. So basically, the target is to have communication or wires. Uh, traditionally, the name PLC implies it already. It's a power line, right? Uh, you have here, and you put a signal on it and pull up it and communicate. But uh, since I'm not only promoting this thing to people like power line communications, you know it very well. Uh, I go to other customers, they have no clue what HTPLC means. Uh, it can be also transmitted over any media. It could be DC or even no voltage at all. It could be mid, low, it doesn't matter. So it, it works basically or should work everywhere. Uh, also, to other customers which are not familiar to it, I show this slide often and tell them, okay, what is target solution? And I say, then, okay, look, uh, what we are doing, uh, we have existing challenges of communication, and what we do, we enable data communication exchange as a direct means, or we could also use it in systems for backup, right? And of course, what we also enable is easy and reliable monitoring or controlling, switching, or of any devices or system. So HAPLC is 100% capable of doing this. And the great thing is you could even use existing cabling and existing infrastructure, right? Network infrastructure for it. Uh, many, many possible use cases, but as I already showed them, I mean, a lot of stuff. But uh, for me, main, main three targets here I would like to highlight is, of course, smart meters, smart meter gateways. That's where we are here, right? And you know probably better than me what it means. So high data rate is very important and especially in long-distance communication, being reliable and secure. Uh, I think HPLC would be also a great solution for photovoltaics or solar power. Uh, and we also look very much now in IoT Society 5.0 products, as Koda Sans said, including smart homes, smart buildings, smart city industrial complexes. So there, the thing is, especially also already mentioned, stable, secure communication, could use more than switching devices or for, yeah, controlling entire networks. Street lighting is a very uh, interesting field as well. We have NDX Global here who are doing these kind of applications. And we t if we talk about street lighting applications, not only meaning turning off or on or dimming the light, it also includes then having, for example, a post where you could plug on some cameras, having video, put some signaling or signs or ads or emergency or whatever. And then you need more data transmission, so HTPLC would be the best solution I see uh, in anything this. Other very important uh, items are tunneling shaft pipes at the bottom. So these are areas where wireless have huge problems. And there I think uh, HTPLC again can do the trick to get the last mile. There's also a slide I show to customers uh, which are not familiar with it, just to explain them how simple and easy HTPLC mm -hmm. is. So basically, uh, normally you want to transmit something, so you have something like a laptop, and you have something on the other side, could be a camera, could be any kind of device, and you want to transmit data. Then it depends where you are in the office, probably you would use an uh, Ethernet cable, which is available already at home, or somewhere outside, maybe we use uh, wireless communication, right? But uh, what's going to happen if, for whatever reason, cable breaks or wireless is down? What could you do? And I said, it's very simple, just mm -hmm. use uh, all that communication. So you use one, you can see a picture of the laptop and the device, and you just use it's our evaluation kit. So you just plug in one evaluation kit, the master device, the PC, and you have a terminal device to, to the other you want to connect to, use a power line cable, plug it in, and there you go. You can transmit data or do whatever you want with it. So that's why I say it could be a, a main kind of uh, communication technique to connect things. Uh, it could be a supporting technology or a bridging technology. And there's also many applications out there where you want to have a secondary backup system. Right? So if one means of communication breaks down, you must make sure that anyway data are communicated or transmitted. So it would be a perfect mean to use this in such kind of environment. 
uh, basic slide deck again, just uh, a little bit showing the difference between uh, uh, known technologies like uh, on the right side Ethernet and Wi-Fi and HTTP and C. So as said, of course, on the right side Ethernet, you need a Ethernet cables or unique cables cost money. You are restricted on distance and stuff. Wi-Fi, of course, is very uh, flexible, but uh, yeah, if it comes to security concerns or if there is a wall in between, then uh, yeah, you will soon lose out. And of course, if you use HTTPLC, you could use existing power lines to do the trick, or you will uh, use comms cable like TV, coax cables, or whatever, and you could do just the same, any kind of cable you do. And with that, you can get anywhere high security, yeah, high speed comms, and uh, very stable communications. Okay, about SocialNet solution, this is basically, again, some introduction on the standardization, but I already explained it very, very well. So, the point here which I want to make is HTTPLC is around for quite a while, while, so it's nothing new. It's some very natured kind of technology. The standard knows exactly what it knows. It is a uh, long time here, so there is no surprises in there. But, and if you see also the timelines at the top, but uh, yeah, it's a long time there, and for the PLC 1 or 2 or third generation, there have been improvements, but nothing break, uh, groundbreaking. However, for the fourth generation, there are many, many new implementations, and that's really important, uh, because there's new channel functions and uh, switchable bandwidth, right? So for channel functions, you can have the X1, which is the standard mode, available all the time, or you can have, I call it now, half-rate mode or quarter-rate mode, to uh, reduce transmission uh, data rate, but you get extended range. And actually, uh, this was not mentioned, uh, the fourth generation also enables uh, in the standard a uh, times two or times four mode uh, to have higher data transmission if you really need it. But uh, the guys that I talk to, the customers, they are mostly interested in long distance rather than higher throughput. Uh, already mentioned, Five rate max was mentioned, and of course, if you have the times four mode, you have one gigabits per second uh, available. Important to mention is uh, that we have these multi hop functions, right? So basically, if you use a standard cable, you have the X1 mode uh, around uh, 400 meter. If you have times four mode, it goes up to one kilometer. I have slides later to show this. And you have multi hop functions, so if you have 10 hops uh, times one kilometer, you have 10. It was already explained that we have wavelet uh, OFDM and the bandwidth was explained. Cell size, uh, I stated now 1,000 because that's a nicer number. And uh, but overall what I want to say for this slide is it really is with the fourth generation, this is the best coverage power line communication system out there. You can compare it with anything you want. I think it is the best and it's a significant improvement uh, we're done in the latest standard. And it still continues with uh, continuing with the profile of 1901 E and C uh, with NESM, right? So it's yeah, very future oriented. <laughs> uh, our chip itself, I said, uh, we enable long distance. We are very, very low power, the lowest power uh, chipset available in the market, even compared to G.H. and we did like four or five times I had enough for sizes. Like, so small package, very low power. So you see on the right side at the bottom, our chipset uh, was in there, like uh, a diagrams a bit. So we have the CPU in there with all the necessary standard interfaces which, which are needed normally in praxis. We also support uh, BACnet and, and the, the other technical standards. Uh, of course, we have the HPLC 4 code uh, for, for generation in there. We uh, have the max fire rate support of 250. Uh, we have a distance of 10 kilometers of 10 hops. Uh, I said here again, no, it's up to 1,000 with one single uh, power supply with 3.3 volt, which is also very good for people who have to integrate it. And the uh, power consumption is very low, 200 milliwatts. That's uh, typical, that, that's nothing. And the uh, four factor also very, very small, 7x7 seven, seven seven chipset with a uh, yeah, very compact design. And, and of course, we keep the industry standard and temperature requirements and standards. Uh, this is a slide maybe just, uh, yeah, you know, also very well at the top. It shows uh, channel X1 that was so far available for third generation devices. And now I said we do have new channel plans like X2, X3, which are the divide by two 
represents divided by two, and we have an uh, x4, 5, and 6, and 7 channel, which is divided by one fourth. And this is implemented now in the fourth generation. And of course, if you go to the right side, everybody knows as longer cabling distance goes, as uh, uh, lower is the received power, as higher are the losses. And of course, then on top of it, you have uh, something on the line coming from neighbors. So your signal to noise ratio is going all over the place. And uh, how does then uh, this third, uh, this fourth generation helps us? So that's what I want to show you. So in the beginning, you maybe use just the X1 channel. So like I said, you had the whole range, so there is no much power, a lot of uh, disturbances on the line. So you, you cannot transmit anything actually. But you can switch then now into the X2 mode. So you only use, use half of the band. All the 512 subcarriers, which were used at the beginning for the complete X1 band, are now squeezed into the X2 band, and you can have a data transmission enabled. Uh, on the bottom right side, I have a small graph. I have here, a, I put a 5 megabits line because uh, most of my customers even don't need that one. But just to indicate what, what it means, so if you have an X1, you will have a, a distance you can reach of around about 400 meter. That's uh, using standard Japanese VVF cables, which we use in the laboratory. So we could reach uh, with our setup uh, around 400 meter, and if you switch to an X2 mode, then you could reach like at least 700 meter. And the same thing applies then, if you say, okay, that's not enough, or there's still some issues, you can go to X4 mode, you go to this area, you even improve again, if you're lucky, the signal to noise ratio, or if, if the signal to noise ratio might be on this side better, you could, you could use the X5. I mean, it depends, you have uh, all the means to check this in a, a, a just adapt accordingly, right? And then again, all the 512 subcarriers will be squeezed in here. And yeah, again, most importantly, we can get the high range. Okay, this slide is just uh, to tell you about the development status. Of course, we have all the documentation, which you said is available here. Uh, yeah, we have uh, software, PC tools, user manuals, everything. And uh, in the case are there, available to buy. And of course, as again yesterday already said, we are all mass production ready, which is very important. Then summary of my talk, just quickly, yeah, I think we have unique selling points for HTPLC in general, or like we call it now Nestum, I put it here on the bottom, as explained nicely. So uh, for our solution, it's a very small package size, very low power, it's a state-of-the-art device, yeah, and it can compete with any other broadband communication ships that are there easily. Uh, we conform to the latest IEEE standard, right? And it's the uh, yeah, first worldwide device using fourth generation. Uh, as explained, it's easy to use, it's easy to control. Uh, of course, I also explained the uh, IC purity and encryption, right? If we also support IEEE 802.1x for total transfer, which is very important for yeah, especially power line communication people. Uh, we have enabled long uh, reliable communication, yeah. We have multi-mode hop and uh, uh, yeah, can connect up to thousand modes, which is also much more than other uh, standards or GBOT chain could ever do. Uh, what else? Uh, as already mentioned, yeah, we do have all the interfaces normally needed. You are SPI, Ethernet, Mac, are and, uh, yeah, also support existing industry protocols. And uh, yeah, by simplifying wiring and work and reduce cost, uh, of course, we have a perfect solution for the market. And most important, again, we do have a mark, major solution of HP and C lines, right? So that's why we are here. And uh, we have a worldwide eco system as well. We are interoperable, which is also very important for everybody. Uh, so we can work with different vendors and with many customers. We can focus on IoT and uh, society five point five one and uh, yeah. get critical and security infrastructure in the sector done. So that is from my side, I think. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you.